right, welcome everyone. This is Chris Petri. Thanks so much for stopping by. I'm glad you're here and we're gonna actually have a great time. We're gonna do a beautiful seascape. And uh, we're gonna do this painting real simply. We're gonna go through each step of the way so that you know how to actually um, navigate through the painting so that it's easy for you. Uh, the colors we use will show you step by step all the different uh, process as we go through to create this beautiful painting, this seascape. Um, every detail we're going to cover, the trees, the figures, the rocks, the sailboats, everything in one video. We'll go step by step. Um, this is the picture, so it's good to show this. This is a new method I have of we're going to show the finished painting first. This way you can take a picture of it, you can do a screen capture, um, you can put it up on another device like a laptop and hit pause and then you have the finished painting and then you can use this as your your um, actual to work from so that you have this that's the best way to do watercolors when you start out or even you know if you're not a beginner but you're still working towards getting a lot better if you work from actual paintings themselves watercolor paintings themselves you're going to have a lot easier uh, an easier time uh, figuring out uh, how to capture all the nuances of watercolor because it is a difficult medium and uh, so we're going to show you everything right here. All right, so we'll get right into the video. Um, hope you enjoy and we'll get started. Okay, we looked at our painting, our finished painting. And we're going to get right into uh, getting started now. We're going to draw our composition. And it's a beautiful seascape we're going to do. And lots of beautiful colors. Um, we're doing the glazing technique here. Um, as a watercolor artist, um, uh, you'll always hear me say on my channel, try to learn as many um, approaches as you can to painting. The direct approach where you just go right in and start painting and you're not really... Uh, concerned about doing washes and overwashes. Um, practice maybe that method. I just give it as a, you know, um, as a, um, I don't know, a, a suggestion because I really think it helps if you can pr kind of practice, you know, just going right in and painting. Also try the glazing approach and you'll notice too, my many of my videos, I, I do both approaches, glazing as well as uh, a la prima or the direct approach. Um, I tend to do more direct approach painting. But in essence, when you are painting watercolor, you're going to find that you're actually doing both a lot of the time anyway. So, But overall, you know, there, you know, there are those two main kind of schools of thought. Many professional painters like the a la prima. Many painters, probably more painters like the... Uh, glazing technique, but there's many painters too that do the a la prima. So um, let's uh, just draw in our uh, composition here. We're going to do our pencil um, drawing first. And I think we're going to probably, we'll do our space divisions. So I think around, if this is halfway, halfway point, I would say this will be uh, top of rocks. So we could just make a, a note, top of rocks is going to be about halfway on the painting. And then maybe this one, if this is halfway, a little bit above halfway, we'll make another cropping of actually land. So we'll put the land over here. And I think we'll create another bit of land over here too. So I'll put some more land over here. These are just my own notes. You'll put your own notes in as you see fit. You'll make your own little notations. But just to get the overall feel of the painting so that we're more or less going to have a painting where the, the, um, the subject matter is going to be a little bit above the halfway point and the sky is going to be a little thinner 
and in some paintings you're going to maybe go with more sky, two-thirds sky, and maybe a third of uh, land, let's say, and water. So you can adjust your adjust your uh, composition as you as you feel, and you can do the same thing when you're on location. When you're on location painting, or when you're even looking at another one, someone else's painting, or even if from a picture, or whatever you know, whatever you're using as your subject matter to draw and paint from, you can adjust things uh, to your liking so that you can try different things and see what you like best. All right, so here I'm just going to make a little indication of um, some land here, just some bit of land here. And then uh, We'll have another we'll have some more land coming down into the like this. So these will be some rocks and and you can just see I'm loosely doing this. And these these lines are pretty much going to be level. This one might you know sway a little bit this way over here just to maybe have a little bit of a feeling of uh, curve, like a curve here, maybe just to curve the eye into the painting. And uh, over here, let's do another. This here, we're gonna do a larger. And some rocks here, so this is a larger. This is a really large rock cropping here in the uh, ocean along the shoreline. So this is a beautiful seascape. And if you want, we can use a ruler. I'm going to find a ruler here. So sometimes a ruler can be can be good to just get a um, a nice good straight line for our ocean for our distant ocean horizon line, and then we kind of just get a feel for where we want that. I say about there. Yeah, it's about good the where we top of. So we went a little bit higher here. You can change around as you feel. And you're drawing and you're working on your composition, you know, you can change your design a little bit. So I'll take my mark that I made for top of rock and I'll just make that the water line. And I'll just make it level. Like that. And then that'll be the water the ocean in the distance, the horizon line. And then you can kind of see we have the, the basic essence of the drawing and composition completed here. And I think it looks good. We could add a few rocks here in the this area here. And that makes it interesting, you know, we have different size rocks and shapes. And I'll, I'll go with one more over here. So you can just imagine the eye going around the painting and looking at looking at the different rocks and probably resting. The eye would probably rest around here on these larger shapes here, the larger side of the hills coming down into the water and the, the rocks here and 
this will be really a perfect place to take a break. And then we'll come back and we'll start painting. And we'll go over our colors, what colors we're going to use, um, our brush, and uh, we'll get started. Okay, we'll be back in just a minute. We'll take a break. Okay, so we're back. We just had a quick break. We're going to uh, start painting here. Let's get our uh, palette. And the only thing with my palette is it's uh, for larger paintings. This is a you know like a maybe a 12 by 14 or a 10 by 14. I think it's about a 10 by 14 here. Let's see what we have. This is uh, 14 by 10, 10 by 14 painting. So when I'm doing a larger painting, I'm going to use a larger palette like this. Um, this way, if I'm in the middle of the painting, I don't run out of paint. So I know these have really large wells compared to. You know, usually you'll see I have more of a smaller palette. A lot of times I'm uh, doing smaller paintings, maybe, you know, uh, 5 by 7 or uh, 8 by 10. This is a little larger, so I, I want to shift over to a, a larger palette. But I use all the same colors, and I keep this in uh, the refrigerator covered in, plastic, in a plastic bag so that the paints stay moist. And I just have a little damp sponge that I keep inside the palette too like that when I close it up and put it in a baggie keeps everything moist and this way when I am ready to paint I just open up my palette it's pretty good I just had to add a few colors that I was low on so now with this that that tends to be pretty good the only thing is We have to figure out something to do here. I might have to shift things around a little bit. Okay, so we'll just do a quick adjustment here. I'm just going to lift up the paper. Before I do that, I'll just make a mark on my paper. this I'll use some tape so I just take some tape here uh, artist tape and I'll just put it under the bottom of the palette and then I'll just line it up again so I make sure I'm to where I was. All right, so that's about there. Bottom of the paper is about here. That looks good. And I'll mix over here on the left hand side and I'll open up the zoom a little bit like that. And I'll just raise up my paper on a couple pieces of sponge like that. That's good. And some more tape, just so the painting doesn't move around. That's pretty good. And one more over here. So we do things on the fly sometimes here. We're going to just do things to rearrange. Perfect. Okay, so now we're ready to rock and roll here. 
fresh clean water and we're going to do some uh, glazing. So the, the glazing approach of course is sky color. Cerulean blue, cobalt blue, French ultramarine blue, ultramarine violet, purple color, and we'll add in some raw umber. Okay, a little more water. And let's just do a glazing approach. Just everything on there. We mix up enough water and paint that we can get our first first bit of um, wash on. And then we'll use just water to make it lighter as we get closer here. We'll go right into the mountains. That's all fine. And just, that's all we do. Leave some white, maybe a couple little white spots here and there of paper. As you can see, we're just getting lighter and lighter as we go. And that's all. So we just mixed up our first color, our three, three blues and our purple. Then I'm going to add a little bit of Viridian Green here for the water. So I just, this is quick though, this you're only going to take 10-15 minutes at most to do this section of the painting, or this portion, this first glazing. We don't want to, it's got to be done quickly so that it stays looking good. If we keep messing with this and keep going over and over, then it starts to uh, destroy the really beautiful look of just the wash on the paper. Because, because what happens is that the, the paint starts to dry as we're working on it right now. That paint is starting to dry already. So now if we keep going in and adding more brush strokes, it's going to make funny looking marks, unpleasant looking marks. So the thing is, we get that wash on and we just let it dry. So now we're going to take a break, probably 20 minutes to a half an hour to let this all dry. And this is gummed paper. This is a gummed pad. So. This is pretty much a gummed pad that I'm using. Rough paper, Arches Rough, it's the orange pad. So you not notice uh, uh, Arches has different um, uh, gummed pads of watercolor paper. So this is the orange pad, which is rough watercolor paper. And then this is Arches um, satin finish, which is the pink. So, but you can see how it's gummed all along this. And then when you're done with your painting completely, when it's 100% dry, then you just break it with a small uh, butter knife around the edges and you peel it right off and it's nice and flat. So the way you tell this is dry enough to come back in and do your second wash is when you're using a gummed pad is the paper will be back flat again, just the same way that as when you started. So once you put your washes on, the water buckles the paper and you'll notice the paper gets wavy because all the water goes in and the paper expands. And then now we wait a half an hour, that paper will be almost flat. And that's the time when it's ready to go back in and we'll do our, our other washes. Okay, so we'll take a break and we'll come back in a half an hour. Okay, we let our paper dry. I gave this about a half an hour to dry and there's just a little bit of waviness left in the paper, but very little, so there's hardly any buckling now. This paper's almost back to its original, completely uh, flat state and dry state. So that's the crucial thing here when you're doing glazing technique, you have to 
let your paper dry completely. Unless you're really experienced with watercolor, like if you've been painting watercolor for like five or more years, um, then I would say use your own judgment on how much you let the paper dry. But if you're sort of in the beginning phases of learning watercolors, maybe your first three or four years or a couple years and you're still figuring things out, um, you're, you're better off when you're doing the glazing technique to just let this completely dry, this uh, first wash. Once this first wash is completely, you know, 100% dry, then you go back in and we do our second wash and you'll, you'll notice that it'll be so much easier. Um, professional watercolor artists that use the glazing technique will you'll notice they might go in when the paper is still damp. And that's fine because they know how much exact paint to use onto the damp paper that the paper is not going to run, the uh, water's, water and paint is not going to run and blossom out and make, you know, really bad looking uh, marks on the paper. So it's always a safe bet if you're unsure to um, let the paper, you know, dry 100%. Um, and then as you get experience, you'll start to get the feel of it. Watercolor a lot is feel. You really, the more you paint, the more you kind of just, you, you have a sort of like just an inner knowing of how the water and the paper reacts. And you'll eventually be able to paint, you know, go in and do your first wash. And then within 10 minutes, start going back in and doing another wash over top. But it does take a lot of time to get that feel. So if you have that feel, you don't have to worry. But if you're sort of newer to it or you're just trying out the glazing technique now and you've mostly painted maybe like the a la prima method, just, you know, direct approach, and you haven't tried a lot of this glazing technique, then you're going to have um, a better time of it if you just let this dry 100%. Okay, so we have that 100% clear. Um, this way your painting will look really fantastic as you're working on it. Um, so we did our washes for our sky and water. We're completed with that. Now is a good time. We take our um, paper towel and we just clean up our palette a little bit. Get some of that water uh, puddles and things up because we're going to be going with um, new washes and we're going to be using the same repeating colors. Now at this point, I think we'll go in and we'll start doing the, the uh, land masses and the rock formations. This is real fun. These colors we're going to use, um, since we have the blue and the uh, viridian green, a little touch of viridian green on this first wash, um, we don't necessarily need to add much blue or green to our washes. So now we're going to go in and do our land colors, our rock colors. And that's going to be some raw umber, alizarin crimson, and uh, some burnt sienna. Also some uh, sap green. Olive green sap green so we'll make a little bit of a green grass kind of color some vegetation color but that's about what we're looking at here raw umber burnt sienna a little bit of lizard and crimson for that nice warm rocks color and maybe we can even use a little blue over here some cerulean blue and that should be good and then maybe we'll start over here And you just fire this in. I'm using a large number 16 brush, a Da Vinci Maestro. And we're just going to get our color in there. And as you see, I'll just keep adding once I start out and figure out what colors we use. Then you just you match back in there what you had. That's kind of a good thing to remember. Once you get your paper, uh, once you get your colors fi figured out, what, what you want to use, whenever you see it running low in your palette, you just go back in and hurry up and replenish it to that same spot so that you're always kind of you can remember and, and keep track of the colors. We're not using a lot of different colors here. 
as you can see. A little bit of that green color. We will make some darks too, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. Some rock colors, those really dark rocks. I'll do a little bit of splashing, be careful with splashing. You see a splash go somewhere that you, you're not happy with, you just lift it up quick with a paper towel or a uh, tissue. But as you can see, we're working those same colors, make them happy colors and make them different. Don't let's not get into the habit of just going in with one color and trying to paint all these mountains and rocks with one color that would look really that would look kind of boring wouldn't it doesn't this look much better if you add in these different colors here and we can go back in and get some of that dark wash there And this is your your painting. You can adjust things a little bit if you want. You can adjust your colors if you want to use different colors. I'm just giving you what I think looks good. You can change your color uh, schemes to make it more interesting for your liking. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll get our colors in there. Red, alizarin and crimson, burnt sienna, raw umber. And we'll come over here and we're gonna get these. Look at that. If you load your brush with all the different colors that we mixed right here, you know, that beautiful mixture of colors does all the work for you. You don't even have to work too hard on figuring out how to mix the colors on the paper or you just get all those colors out on your palette and then once you load your brush up with all the colors right in and you'll see that it and then we just mix our greens over here just for that little feeling of some grass, some vegetation here and there. Okay, some darks over here. Little dark rocks. Okay, uh, rinse off my brush, dab off a little water, go back in, we get our colors again, raw umber, burnt sienna, lizard and crimson, a little bit of uh, cerulean blue over here. Look at that, we don't have to worry. We just pick up the color.
some greens. And we just make sure that our our rocks and these uh, these rocks and outcroppings of land, we just want to make sure they're level. This is the only place I made a little bit of a curve. Other than that, these are all they're all uh, level. The um, Fill in some darks over here. And again, we only have a little bit of time to add more color back into these larger shapes. Once we once we make these larger shapes, these rocks and outcroppings of land, once we put these in, then we can only go back in maybe you know a couple minutes later and charge in some colors like you see me doing. Other than that. We have to let it just dry again and do the same process, let it dry 100% and then come back in and add more on top. But I think we're going to be good with the way we have it here. And I'm making some square shapes for rocks, more French ultramarine blue, burnt umber for some darks. And again, we only have a little bit of time to charge some of these colors in, these darks. Okay, perfect. Let's let this dry 100%. Once this dries 100%, then we come back in and we're going to do our final washes on the ocean. We're going to make some dark waves, some lights, some greens, some blues here, some darker tonal values to give this water some more interesting uh, variation. And maybe we'll add another little bit of some wash to the sky possibly we might leave this more simple and uh, not go too much more but let's let's definitely take a break now let this dry and we'll come back and uh, continue on okay we took another break everybody <laughs> welcome back I'm glad you're here hey I meant to uh, just quickly mention uh, if you haven't subscribed uh, please consider uh, subscribing and um, uh, hitting the note you know the notification bell that way you kind of know when our videos are coming out here so um, you'll be uh, all ready to go you'll have a uh, notification that uh, we've made a video we're once a week creating new videos so if you are new that you can just uh, know for certain each week we make a new video we do all t you know different types of uh, watercolors we uh, strictly watercolors on this uh, on my site on my YouTube channel and we do seascapes landscapes cityscapes we create um, still life uh, paintings flower paintings um, figure paintings we do some figure work once in a while we'll do we do a little bit of everything here but mostly we do 
you know, finish paintings from A to Z, the whole enchilada. We show you how to start the painting, draw the, you know, draw the first, do the drawing, pencil drawing, and then how to do the, uh, all the other steps that you need to um, uh, do at, to create the full painting all the way from the beginning to the end. So that's what we're doing here, of course, and I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you stopped by to this channel, and I'm hoping you'll keep coming by, and I thank you, too, for, for coming by as well and uh, joining along with us here as we're painting. So we're just getting started back up. We, um, we, we made sure that this next wash, we did our second glazing, our second wash, which were the croppings of land, the rocks in the water, and now that'll be our second glazing complete. We let it dry for a half an hour or so until it was completely dry. And now we're at that point where we're doing our final um, uh, finishing uh, washes here. We're gonna shift to a smaller brush. Um, we're gonna use a needle, needle point brush. And as well, we're going to use a Raphael round brush, which is a little smaller. This is a number six. We started the painting with a number 16 uh, Da Vinci Maestro Kalinsky Sable brush. So these are the best uh, watercolor brushes you can buy. Brushes are so important. You have to have good brushes. You know, you can use um, whatever your budget allows you to. That's the, you know, buy the best brush you can. Do your research. There's tons of great uh, videos out there on YouTube about brushes and reviews and all kinds of great uh, information at your disposal on YouTube. So, you know, you can uh, do that research first and see which brushes you can purchase. But the sable brushes are the best and they really do uh, work great. And we're using Arches Rough Paper. Again, that's the best, you know, some of the best watercolor paper you can buy is Arches and we're using Arches Rough, which is the orange pad. If you buy the gummed pad, it's got the gum around the outside edges. I use those a lot. And um, Arches makes gray paper. You can really, it gives you a lot of working time. You can go back in and add and put in some colors as you're working. Some of the less expensive papers, you'll have a hard time charging in colors as you're going, you know. As you saw us do here, we painted these rocks and these land croppings here. And then we went in and added some darks. As it was starting to, you know, once we, you know, put the washes down, the first wash, even as we put that wash down, we started to charge in some colors here and there. With a less expensive paper, it would make probably really um, problematic, um, uh, unpleasant looking marks. A lot of times the paper just doesn't really handle going in and adding colors as you're working a lot of times. But the Arches paper and Fabriano and um, some other uh, professional grade papers, you, you have more working time with it. So just another tidbit of information. I hope you enjoy that informational there. That's really, can make a big difference too. So you just try to buy the best watercolor paper you can. And we're gonna get back started here. Let's do the, um, distant so that's raw umber raw umber French ultramarine blue a little bit of raw sienna maybe cerulean A little bit of, uh, I just did a little mix of uh, lizard and crimson, raw umber, raw sienna, and a little bit of uh, French ultramarine blue, and a little bit of cerulean too. And I'll just carefully... Now I'm going to go around the sailboat. And 
and I just carefully okay so we put in that distant that distant uh, hill in the distance in the shore, uh, shoreline now we can go in and get some raw sienna with a little bit of uh, Blizzard and Crimson. Let's wait on that. I'm going to let that dry first. Let's see if we can do this a little bit here. All right, that worked out good. I was able to get a little bit of that sand color in there at the base of that uh, distant hill. Now we'll take a little cobalt blue and let's see notice how it's pretty a lot of paint just a little bit of water a lot of paint Cross. And I'm leaving a little bit of white paper there, you can see that. Those are the waves. A little bit of Viridian Green. Then I go and we'll go and get some uh, French ultramarine blue, straight French ultramarine blue, a little bit of uh, burnt sienna. Burnt sienna. We're gonna make this a real dark blue. A little bit of green, sap green, or olive. Actually, sap green. French ultramarine blue. And you can see I'm doing a fine, fine line of the blue green, dark blue and green. And just sort of moving it in a little bit here and there. And the same over here. We're just adding some of that dark French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. 
Then we'll go in and get that cobalt blue. And we'll leave some of those white bits of paper. Now I'm going to go to the bigger brush, back to the 16 round brush. I'll make some more of that French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, viridian. really just trying to uh, tie tie things in leaving that lighter paper that's real important to leave some of that light paper so you just want to really Again, more uh, French ultramarine blue, viridian green, a little bit of burnt sienna. Here we can do a little darker tonal values here. And notice near the edges of the paper I stick with less whites of paper. That's We want the exciting whites of paper to be in the cent central areas of the painting. And I think what that gives us of that feeling of the waves coming in, like this. So we keep those brush strokes coming in this way. And automatically just by having your brush strokes moving in this way as we're working with the paint and the washes, that's going to give, it's going to just have that feeling of the ocean coming in and the waves. And then we can make up a few more darks. French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, sap green. And that's good. This is where too much over and over and over of doing this will kind of lose the effect of what we're looking for that darks and lights all the way through here. So bright white paper and the beautiful contrast and tonal values of the darker paint here and um, leaving the white paper here. That's the foam the shoreline, the foam, just, you know, a feeling of the ocean. And then I'm going to have a little bit of um, the smaller brush. I'll do my splashing. This is good. We're going to do that splashing. Even with the darker paint, that's going to be fine. And then maybe
French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, sap green, and a few a few darks in here too. I think I'm going to leave the sky as it is. Um, so the only thing I would say we can do now is we'll let this dry. We'll take another break. Um, that was the most fun part, really. Was that fun or what? <laughs> you can have a lot of fun with this. The, the waves and the and the ocean part. This section is so much fun. I hope you have fun with that and really try it a few different times. You know, try this painting three, four different times until you really get it where you have that really fun feeling of getting the the waves in this way um, and then the darks and the lights and the white paper leaving some white paper too that's all that it really is is just instead of filling in the whole area with a darker wash what we did is we left that white light first glazing we left some of that in there and didn't cover it and we went around it with the darker tonal values and that gives us that real beautiful look of um, the ocean and the light bouncing off the the, uh, the waves coming in and crashing along the shoreline. All right, so we'll come right back. We'll finish up. We'll do a little more detail to that sailboat. We'll add a few trees into these um, croppings here, and we'll be all set. Okay, we're sort of finishing up here, and... Uh, we just took a break and we let uh, our wash dry for the ocean. That's very important. Um, so as you can see, we've been saying this all along in this video, um, as we go through the uh, steps of a uh, glazing technique, the, the glazing technique is really paint, take a break, let it dry, paint, take a break, let things dry. And we do that same process and pattern over and over until we get all the washes down that we want. So, you know, just to catch up to speed a little bit, one more time, we did our really light wash first of the sky and water. So you can see that the sky is the under wash for the ocean, for the coastline here. And then we did our second glazing after that was 100% dry, the sky and the ocean area. We did our land croppings coming down into the coast into the uh, uh, ocean here and then this rock here with some grass and some feeling of um, shrubs and things like that with the green paint just a little touch of that green paint here and there um, we let that dry 100% then we came in a third time and we did our darker washes of the ocean. Darkest darks out here in the ocean. That gives us a nice crisp line for our horizon line. And then we put those dark washes and we just put those washes, the darker washes, that into the uh, coastal area here, coming into the to the land. And this is some of that lighter wash. And we're going to leave that the same color as the sky. That makes a nice unified painting. Um, we didn't overwork this at all. The temptation is to go in and start adding washes to these lighter sections. We definitely don't want to do that. We want to leave this the same tonal value as in the sky. The sky is... Uh, the, the water is, is picking up the reflections of the sky in some of these areas here. So that looks really good. So let's stick with that. Let's not overwork it. Now we're just going to do some final uh, details that we can add to the painting. You can leave them out if you want. You can just leave this at this point. You might be happy with if you're doing this painting at home and you find that you like this. And it's this is something, you know... You can leave it at this point. This looks beautiful just the way it is now, but we will take it a little extra step and, and get a little more detail in, <clears throat> into the painting. So what I'll do is um, 
I'm going to take a little bit of uh, I'm going to take a little bit of yellow ochre and then just put that into the tube here of titanium white so we have a little bit of a titanium white paint with a touch of yellow ochre just to give it that warm feel and I'll we'll add some sp sparkles of light to this sailboat over here and that's good and then we'll add the And then I'll add the white portion of the boat underneath the sailboat. And I will take some more titanium white. And I'm just going to speckle and splash just a little bit of water to get that feeling of spray. And just a little bit, that's good. Okay, okay now do a small French ultramarine blue just a small shadow under there and then I take a tissue and dry off the brush almost completely just so I don't overdo it and I'm just going to put a little little bit of a sail here if I could uh, mast there like that and I think just put a, a lighthouse there I thought to put a lighthouse out here in the distance that just gives it more interest so that you're, the person looking at the artwork and the painting is going to kind of see all different interesting things going through the painting. The rocks, the ocean, the splashing, the sailboat, the distant, line, uh, distant hills, coastline, and then also the, um, the uh, lighthouse here in the distance. So we'll put that there. Also, we can add in a figure or two if you want. I'm going to do that myself. I think it'll look really good. But again, if you find that you just like a more, you know, simplistic looking painting, you can leave it without these final details. That's, that's fine too. You're the artist. It's up to you. So I'm going to start here by um, I'm just going to make some pencil lines here. So that's one figure there, and another figure over here. And I just indicate the head, shoulders, and, uh, and just the legs a little bit in the water. So these are some figures walking near the coastline here. 
And then for the figures, I'm going to uh, have some uh, brown for the hair. Uh, I'm going to go with some cadmium red for the first figure. So this person's going to have on a red shirt. And I think the main thing is... Um, I'm just getting in some colors, maybe some yellow ochre for the... Very simple uh, So I'm going to make some uh, flesh tone. And some hair color. And that's all. That's uh, you know, um, you know, some hair, a little bit of a you know, some hair, brown hair I made for this person. That uh, cadmium red for the shoulders. Um, I made some yellow shorts here with some yellow ochre, maybe a little bit of uh, cadmium yellow. A little interesting, a bit of color. I'm keeping the figures very simple, as you see. I, I didn't try to overwork this. That's all I'm going to do for that. We'll make another figure over here. Uh, maybe a cerulean blue. Maybe some alizarin crimson. And then we'll do some legs here, just some quick indications of legs. And maybe some umber, raw umber for the hair. Um, I'm thinking a little more. Uh, let's see, that's pretty good, um, maybe we'll do a small, small finger, small child. Just thinking of what colors. Um, maybe go with a simple uh, small child with um
maybe with a little pale. And we'll do a little shadowing. Okay, so we did our, our figures. And we have maybe a mom and a dad with a child. They're out there just walking around the coastline. This is more if you want to take your time and practice this a few times on paper, on like printer paper or something, uh, before you go in and do this. If you feel like you're not too comfortable with figures or you haven't done figures a lot, I'm really just doing very simple um, renditions of figures, nothing too... Uh, too intricate and we're going to go in and do a few highlights with our figures so we would just take a little bit of that titanium white with a little touch of um, yellow ochre just to give it a little bit of a warmth to it and we'll put some uh, highlights on the shoulders. And that just adds that bit of light to the uh, figures. And I think that looks good. I'm thinking that this is um, complete, except let's, let's add just a few more things again. I don't feel I'm overdoing the painting right now, but I'm going to take a French ultramarine blue, sap green, French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, thick paint, thick paint, no water, hardly any water at all. And we'll do some pine trees, just a few. So here I'll just and we're having some uh, parades today, so I hope we can enjoy that fun sound of the sirens. We're having parades in our town today. And you can see I'm just doing some simple pine trees here. So at first I get the, the straight lines like that, then a few curved lines going up, a couple of the branches going up, and then a couple just uh, And then we'll do a few more. We're gonna do and again just the, using the needlepoint brush, these are this brush is perfect for the uh, fine details and and if they look a little bit too, you know, you can just dab the I think that's good. A few pine trees really 
maybe even a couple out here. Small, I make them much smaller out here now. And if we make them smaller out here, it kind of makes this seem to push back a little bit in the painting. see I just do this haphazardly I don't really Okay, now's the point where it starts to, you know, maybe one more here. darker at the bottom. So I'll go over this a little bit more again, just darker at the bottom. Okay everyone, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed the extra details. If you want, you can keep going and uh, add in these details that we just did. Other than that, this is pretty much about as much details as you're going to want to really put in. Um, we have an additional sailboat. We have a far distant lighthouse to make it more uh, interesting. We have some gorgeous figures with some sunlight. We have some additional uh, pine trees to add that give it more... Uh, detail and that is about that's about just perfect enough details but not too much and um, you can again you can underdo your painting if you like it more uh, abstract looking or minimalist you know if you want it to look more minimalistic you can also again you can leave it uh, you know without some of the further details that we did put in all right everyone Thanks so much for coming by again. If you like the video, please thumbs up. And uh, if you don't like it, thumbs down too. And uh, as well, subscribe if you haven't. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.